Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn is All the Earth. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise to God. Serve you the Lord, heart filled with gladness. Come into God's presence, singing for joy. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise to God. Know that the Lord is our creator. Yes, God is our Father, we are his own. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise to God. Good morning. Welcome all of you as we gather on this beautiful morning to celebrate our faith and our loving God. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us seek our Lord's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring all of us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on you and on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We instruct you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to shun, excuse me, to shun any brother who walks in a disorderly way, and not according to the tradition they receive from us. For you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right, rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone were unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way, the Lord be with you. The greeting is in my own hand, Paul's. This is the sign in every letter. This is how I write. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Bl Behold, this is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. A 
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous, and you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have joined them in shedding the prophets' blood. Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, Archbishop, Archbishop Mitch Rosansky was installed as the 10th Archbishop of the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis, the church in St. Louis, enjoys an extraordinary history in this country. It was one of the first archdioceses west of the Mississippi, and many uh, dioceses in the Midwest and in the West trace their ecclesial roots to the glorious city of St. Louis. It's a tremendous city if you've ever been there, with the exception of being the home of the dreaded St. Louis Cardinals. Um, it's, a, it's a great city. Um, and one of the best kept secrets in St. Louis is its cathedral. In my mind, it's one of the most spectacular cathedrals in the United States. Um, the whole interior of the cathedral is entrust, encrusted with gold mosaics. And if the light is just right, and you walk into that church, it just stuns you with its beauty, this beautiful house of God. And uh, the icon of the city, of course, is the gateway arch, that large steel arch that symbolizes the history of St. Louis of being the gateway to the West. It's often called the Rome of the West because of its religious influence. And the Archbishop yesterday centered his homily on how important in this day and age it is for the church to be a gateway and to avoid being gatekeepers, um, that the mission of the church is to be a gateway or a portal to God's love. And the problem, of course, with churches is sometimes we get caught in the gatekeeping function where we inordinately worry about who can come in and who can stay in and who should go out and who doesn't belong. And this theme is picked up in the gospel today as we, once again, in the gospel of Matthew, hear Jesus' contempt of Pharisees and scribes, for they became to him the, the, the symbol of this uh, gatekeeping function where they spent more time worrying about who couldn't come or who wasn't clean or who didn't belong. And of course, in the essence of the proclamation of the kingdom of God, we all belong. We're all partners. And the Lord in the gospel today challenges us to avoid this sense that I know all the truth or I, it's my way or no way or this is the only way you can approach the Lord. Uh, we hear in the gospel today this great invitation to mercy and hope and inclusion to see in our faith this 
direction of life that sees ourselves as ambassadors, witnesses to the love of God, which we all desperately need. Every one of us has some part of our life that is in pain or in stress or broken. And how wonderful it is when that, that pain is healed, when there's relief to some of the burdens that we're carrying. You know, I suggest to you that if we went around this church this morning and we were able to listen to one another about some of the things we're bringing into the church that's going on in our life, we'd be blown away at some of the things that people are carrying. And the reason we come to the Lord's table is not to be judged, not to be dismissed, but to be embraced and to experience the power of his loving mercy. We pray today for our commitment to be a gateway church, a place where God's children are invited and loved and cherished, for a greater sense of the dignity of the human person that is at the core of who we are as, as believers. We pray today that, like those first disciples, we'll get the idea, we'll embrace the message that we are agents of his love. Let us stand, my brothers and sisters, to gather our thoughts and to place them confidently before the Lord. For our leaders in the church, that like St. Paul, they may conduct themselves in such a way as to be examples of holiness for the imitation of all of God's people. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord of peace may give our hearts, our homes, and our world peace at all times in every way. We pray to the Lord. For all who are infected with the disease of hypocrisy, whose hearts do not match the roles they play before others, that they may receive the great grace of insight and conversion. We pray to the Lord. For those who are forced to labor in toil and drudgery under the trials and burdens of life, that they may find loving hearts and willing hands to help them. We pray to the Lord. For all who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and in a special way for Rosemary Collins, Francis Wojcik, and infant Mary Elizabeth Rowland, who we remember with this Mass, that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ may be with them, purifying them and leading them to their heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Let us also pray this morning for people on the Gulf Coast as they brace for the landfall of Hurricane Laura, for all those who are in danger, for first responders, for the safety of all during this dangerous time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Gracious and eternal God, we rejoice in your love. We embrace your spirit of hope and possibility. Help us, Lord, to open our hearts to you and you alone. We place our prayers before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Jesus Christ, Bread of Life. Jesus Christ, Bread of Life, fill us with your love. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, fill us with your peace. Thankfully, here we bring simple bread and wine for the life of the world once and for all time. Jesus Christ, bread of life, fill us with your love. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, fill us with your peace. Lord, wash me of my iniquity, please. 
forgive me of all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, and on earth our full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the holy martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us pray in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my Holy say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those unable to be here with us today, please join in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our the communion hymn is I Receive the Living God. The body of Christ. I receive the living the God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the bread, needed long to give you life. You who will partake of me, need not ever fear to die. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the vine, and my branches you shall be. Come and drink the saving cup, till the kingdom you shall see. I received the living the God, and my heart is full of, of joy. The I received the, the living Christ. God, and the my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the way, and the my Father longs for you. So I come to bring you home, to be one with you anew. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I receive 
body of Christ. The living God and my heart is full of joy. The body of Christ. Jesus said, I am the truth. If you follow close to me, you will know me in your heart, and my word shall make you free. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with many crowns, God's Lamb upon the throne. Our debt to God, which had no bounds, the Lamb has made his own. Now Christians' praises sing, his death he gave for you. Acclaim the victim as your king, God's life is yours anew. Please join us for rosary in Our Lady's Garden right after Mass. Have a beautiful day.